Hey everybody, how are you? Uh, it is officially 5 o'clock on the East Coast, 4 o'clock here in Chicago. I am Derek Jones, I'm a Chicago-based artist and want to welcome you to the Random House uh, Square Fine Art Show's 5 o'clock uh, on Thursdays. And had a little technical issues uh, starting off, I was supposed to be working on my laptop and now I'm using my iPad. I got my earbuds in so hopefully you can hear me. If uh, anyone is watching, just give me a thumbs up if, uh, if you're having any audio problems. But uh, Anyhow, welcome. So, um, because it's five o'clock, I think it's the annual tradition that uh, pour yourself a glass of wine and um, a cocktail and uh, make yourself comfortable. And uh, I hope you enjoy the presentation. So, I'm going to do a quick cheers to you guys for watching. And then we'll get started. So, give you an idea of what I thought I would do today. My presentation is called um, Painting with hands, uh, no brushes, and that is truly what uh, I do as an artist. So I actually don't use um, paint brushes, uh, I use palette knives every once in a while, but predominantly these are the tools that I use uh, when I'm creating my work. I'm an abstract uh, contemporary landscape artist and I use uh, mixed media as uh, what's considered, I use a lot of different materials and when I go through and show you what we do. But, Give you a little background on uh, myself. Uh, I've been in Chicago just over 20 years now and started painting uh, about 15, 16 years ago and was working full time and uh, just started just started to dabble in, in, in painting and uh, sort of developed a, a love and passion for it and developed uh, you know a little following and started uh, with a studio with another artist and then six years ago moved into my own. 2009, I was laid off from my corporate job, and it was a big blessing in disguise. As much as I loved that job, uh, I was able to sit on the curb with my box after I was let go in downtown Chicago and sat there and thought, this is the opportunity for me to really jump in and be a full-time artist. And so I've not looked back. It's uh, been challenging in the beginning, and uh, this year obviously has its own challenges, but uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't change a thing. So, so to give you an idea, I'm going to show you a few of my collections, give you a quick tour of the studio, and then we're going to just jump right in and kind of show you sort of what a typical day is for me uh, while I'm painting. I'm always asked by so many people at different shows, um, how long does it take you to uh, create a painting, or how many paintings are you working on at the same time? So. I'm more of a large scale painter. I do uh, sort of 30 by 30s are my smallest size that I do proactively. Uh, we're gonna work on some 12 by 12s here. And what um, that allows me to do is just show you a couple different stages of the phases of the larger canvas that I do. So I do do the smaller ones, you know, on commission base, but uh, 30 by 30 is sort of the smallest. So usually in a typical day, I've got five, six, sometimes eight canvases or panels going But uh, first off, I do want to say thank you to the Renton House uh, Fine Art Show uh, the Board of Directors for inviting me to be a part of this. I've uh, been part of the show for four years in person, and uh, this past September was part of the show virtually, and it was a great success, uh, you know, considering the times and our challenges that we're faced as artists. Um, it was a really cool way to go through the show, have people connect through me through Zoom, and I had a booth set up, and it was a lot of fun. But so. What I thought we'd do first, um, it's going to be a little different since this isn't my laptop, so I'm going to have to do a little finagling here, but I'm going to take you up front and uh, walk you through. I'm noticing on a comment people can't hear. Well, if you can let me know if uh, the sound is any better, I just turned up and quickly switched my earbud here. So to give you an idea, uh, with the space here, so this is truly, this is my studio. So the light's really bright um, coming in through the windows. So what I've done is I kind of create a, sort of a little storage work area up front here. This is where my finished and blank canvases go, my walls for my outdoor shows, kind of like that catch-all area. And then I move into what I consider sort of my work and living space. And what I have here is a desk and then sort of a living area. And I've done it on purpose, one for, you know, it's just a great spot for me to 
sit and relax when I'm in between paintings or on my computer doing work. And then um, it also allows me to hang art with furniture. And as you can see, it allows, so when I have clients come through the uh, studio, hi Diane, thanks for uh, letting me know the sound is okay. Thanks for watching. Um, so it allows, you know, for, for clients to actually see the artwork in sort of a, a, a living, living space and rather than just, you know, on a blank wall. So that is sort of this area. And then we move into what is truly the workspace. And I've got four different stations that I work on. Two right here, which I'll be doing the demonstration on. Uh, this is a lot of where the prep work goes. And then as I move forward, I have one station on this side and one station on this side. And due to, hi Bonnie, hello from Florida. Um, what is really cool is it allows me, based on the time of year, I get amazing lights. Uh, I face south, so downtown Chicago is literally right out those windows. You can sort of, you can sort of see it there. Um, so because of the way the sun lowers in the winter, I have to paint on certain sides of the wall, you know, based on how much brightness is coming in through there. So I'm going to apologize for the wiggliness of my traveling with uh, with uh, the iPad because it doesn't move as smoothly as the laptop, but I'm going to move you in closer and then I'm going to kind of talk to you about a couple of my collections and then and then sort of get jump into the demonstration. So I just want to be able to get you full. So you can see I've got a larger one on the easel here and I've got a couple of small ones. I'm going to show you a close-up uh, version of of a finished one and this is the first collection that I'm working on is my One Can Dream series. So this is um, a painting series that I started um, just over six years ago. So I created the very first one in my old studio space and it launched into an entire collection when I moved into this space. And the inspiration behind this, and I'll talk about it while I actually um, bring you close so you can sort of see the detail on one. So I was traveling in Greece, um, probably about seven years ago, eight years ago now, and staying in Mykonos, and I can get real close so you can sort of see the finished detail on, on these. And the little resort I was staying at, um, walked the path from the resort to, uh, to the um, downtown area, constantly, a hundred times within a few days ever staying there. And there was this telephone pole that I walked by just so many times. And one night after dinner with friends and lots of glasses of wine, we were walking back to the hotel and I was stopped in my tracks. And there was this, the same telephone pole that I walked by and never noticed it was lit. And it was covered in a million staples and painted over and washed over and painted again and more staples. and fabric remnants and paper remnants and it was a sculpture and I never took a photo of it but it was ingrained in my, in my brain and so probably a few months after getting back I at that time was working on what I call my Muskoka series which is a birch tree series and I'll show you that later in the presentation um, so it was very linear and very very lined with with abstract trees so I wanted to come up with a concept of how do I take that and what I saw on this pole, and that's where this One Can Dream series developed. So the very first one was layered with the staples. I took the linearness of what I do with the trees, and then I just layered the colors. It was very whitewashed and rusty, sort of what the pole was. And now over the years, it's really developed into a lot more layering of color, a lot more texture that goes on. So. To give you a real idea, this is sort of, I've got three of the smaller ones in stages. So the very first one here, you can actually see the industrial staples have been put in, and then I do shredded paper. And these are my studio bills, um, flyers, show, show paper work, anything that's involved in the studio that um, I shred and then layer on. From that point, and I'll do the sand work in a second, it goes to a point where the sand is then layered on. And the very cool special part about the sand that I use, it's actually beach sand from my family cottage uh, in Ontario, I'm Canadian, uh, living in uh, Chicago. 
And so it really puts the personal part of me onto each panel, but it creates this really fun, gritty texture. And I'll give you, the, give you an idea. So I've got my bucket of sand here. Who I, this round, this first round, I um, have to thank my dad for, for getting for me, but the second round, I ran out during quarantine with the border closed. Luckily, my niece and nephew scooped up some from the beach, and my sister-in-law shipped it to me, so I was able to, to keep working with it. So from that point, then, that's when I started layering on the colors. And I purposely do um, multiple layers of color, and these works have anywhere from 20 layers of color up to 60 layers of color. So at one point, you'll see just a little bit of white, and another point, you'll see all the red, and then it keeps coming. So I layer and layer, and then I start to build the landscape. And what happens is, the, lands, the, the, the visual is, you know, a lot of times I start out with a true idea. So the one you see back here with a lot of the turquoise and blues, that was inspired by a trip down to the Turks and Caicos. And the colors of the water were just so stunning and the beach was so white. So there's a lot of inspiration where I see something. Uh, I've gone for runs along the lakefront here and it's a really foggy gray day. So the paints become very gray and dark and whitewashed and whatnot. Uh, a lot of the reds and a lot of the, the blues and the greens that I do are, um, as you can tell from a lot of my travels and traveling when I'm doing shows, that you know I'll see a forest or I'll see a mountain valley that really inspires me. So I'm going to just quick see if anyone has any questions. Cool. Um, if you do, feel free. I'll just I'll jump in here and uh, answer them as we go. But what I thought I would do is show you how I apply the sand first and then how I layer the colors. Once we're sort of doing this, then we're going to jump into my Inner Courage series, which is my latest series, and we'll get into details on that. So typically with the sand, it gets mixed in with a plaster material called molding paste, and it is um, really great for adding color in uh, as well as any texture. So basically I use my hands, and usually with these the larger panels, these are sitting on my tables behind me rather than sitting flat on these tables, but with the smaller ones, I can kind of sort of do that. So I begin to layer, and I try to allow the staples to really catch the sand, so it almost looks like it's sort of falling off the staple. And depending on how much sand I put on, really changes the, the texture and the feel of how these, these paintings look in their finished process. So the less sand, the less grittiness that the paint can grab on when I'm layering the paint colors on, versus um, the less the less amount of, of uh, sand. And what this does is this really just creates this really cool texture. And so I'm covering up the staples, I'm covering up the shredded paper, so it all really becomes underlying texture for what I'm doing. So as you can see. Lots of fun. Um, Bonnie's asking, what do I use for attaching the paper? I use just, um, got right here, just a pH adhesive. And then between that and all the layers of paint and the sand really uh, secure it onto the wood panel. And because of this, with the, with the industrial staples, I use wooden panels with this series because, um, because of the weight of the texture, because of um, everything that is used. So this gives you an idea, I quit here, I now, I now try to add specifically just a little bit more sand to each of the staples just to give it that extra, extra texture. So it went from very flat to now very, very texture and it's a little hard to see obviously in the light but it uh, gives you kind of an idea of where we're going from there. So while that dries, this is typically what happens. So I'll now have layered uh, sand on a couple panels because while I'm, while I'm covered in sand, I might as well utilize it. So I'll have three or four panels that I'm layering the sand on. I'll wash up and then I'll start adding colors. And a lot of times I'll be using a color on one panel. It becomes another layer on a different panel as well. As, so I kind of multitask when I'm, I'm doing that. So I'm not just always focused on one. However, there are days where I truly am just focused on one painting. So I'm going to quick run of the sink, wash the sand off, and then I'm going to show you the painting. So 
No, I don't believe you still hear me. So, yeah, I've been in the studio now for six plus years, and it was a, a really great move for me as an artist to really be on my own, and it allowed me to really jump, jump in size of canvases, jump in size of uh, just creativity without, you know, having any barriers, you know, because I, I'm truly here, you know, by myself. So, so I close up the stand here. I always joke, I feel like I'm on a cooking show. So I'm gonna get the spatulas out, and uh, here we go. So to give you an idea, before we get to the finished products that are back here, this is the one, this just has staples, so this doesn't have the shredded paper, and but it already has the sand that's dried, whereas this already has three layers of color. So there's a layer of white, there's a layer of teal, and there's a layer of red. So what I wanted to show you is what a version looks like as the first layer of color goes on, and then how I actually start working the landscaping feel into one that already has color. So just like the sand, I literally grab the paint, get it on the hands, and then here's the little trick that I do, because this, and I work with the acrylics, by the way, obviously the oils would not go well with me in my hands. Um, I dab a little water just to make it a little more fluid, and it allows me to really layer it onto the camera. So with this, it all depends on the pressure I use with my hands, how much color goes on in certain spots. So if I really want a, a lot of white to show through in a certain area, I'm going to really layer the pressure on with my hands. However, the initial layers, everything kind of goes on the same because I just allow the colors to really kind of work with each other and fight through the sand and fight through the candle. As I get into the 20th, the 30th layer, that is where I really work with the washes and I really work um, how I'm, I'm actually layering the color with the pressure because that's when, if I go too hard with the pressure of my hands, I might start losing some of the color that I, I, I really want to, to, to show through. So now here, you can see what went from just the plain black sand to now having its first layer of color. So you can see how using the pressure, I um, allow the black still underneath to show through. And then as you can see, as I jump to the next panel, here has the red and the turquoise, and then there's the white underneath. So this would have looked like the one I just showed you. Um, and Ruth just said, no brushes? No, I don't use brushes. These are my brushes. I, uh, I have been painting with my hands probably for, I would say, 10 of the 15 years that I've been painting. And what it does for me it just allows me to really connect with the canvas and with the panel. And the one thing it really does as well is there's no, I purposely, especially in this series, there's no brush strokes. I can really create an amazing smooth finish without the brush strokes. And I know a lot of artists like brush strokes. I like them in certain styles of painting. I do use them uh, way back when, when I was doing sort of the floral series. But with the abstracts, it really creates a softened feel um, for it. So as that white one dries, now normally I would, since I have white on my hands, I would jump into another piece where I need white. Because the way I've got the studio set up, that's the other, the other collection I'm gonna work on, and that's gonna be in a little bit, I'm gonna work on a couple colors here. So usually I run into the sink, but because I'm right here and I've got water, I'll just actually wash off the paints here. And the really cool thing is sometimes I allow the colors to mix, and, uh, which creates obviously new color. But the one thing that I really you know, do is sometimes you know, what, what causes these, this is typically a several week process because the first layers have to go on dry, the staples go on, then the beach sand goes on, every layer of texture takes a day or two to dry before it's on. And then the color work, because it's acrylic, I can work on multiple colors throughout the day However, if I want them not to blend, they have to dry before I do the next color. However, it creates some really cool effects when I, I work with them together while they're still wet. 
So while that pipeline dries, this is where I would typically in the, the day jump in onto the next canvas. And you know, whether I'm working up front here or working there, or I'll sit down and have lunch. You never know. It just depends on what the day is. So now with this one, I'm now adding sort of an, a, a really, really cool ultramarine sort of light blue that I'm using. And this is where I will now start to decide, am I covering the whole panel with the color, or do I just cover portions of it? And as it goes on, I will show you closer up. So this is where now, obviously with the smaller panel, I get through this awfully faster than I do with the larger panel. So you can now see I'm starting to create that landscape feel. So I, I, sometimes I listen to the little voice in my head, sometimes I don't, and um, it depends on whether I really want any of this blue color to show through, but here you'll see, you can now see the white, the patina, the blue, the red coming through. So eventually, this will look like one of the, the other ones. And so I'll just do a little blue on here, and then as that dries, we'll be able to jump back into that first one. So we have got that finished. So as we jump into the next one, this is where suddenly I'm like, well, the white's white's so good, I'm actually gonna go with this color. I typically do a three-color process at the beginning of a red, a patina, and then a white, but that's not always the case, but that's predominantly what I do. But here, because I had the color on my hand and I was ready to do something, this is now going to give me a more cloudy effect already. You can see, you can see how the blue is already changing how that white looks, and it softens it up and it really changes it. Now, I'm asked a lot of times, you know, does, does the elements and the textures that I use mean anything or, or represent anything. So I said at the beginning, the shredded paper that goes on, our studio bills, so my gas bill, electric bill, uh, bank statement, uh, could be show material that from a previous show a year before that I just put through a shredder. The beach sand comes from my family cottage again, so that's no more. But the industrial staples, I was taken from the idea of what I saw when I was in Greece. But the cool part um, that I like to tell people is there's a rhyme and reason how the staples go on. So if you see, this one will probably be the best one to see it. I actually layer the staples on in one, threes, and fives. So there's a linearness to them, and they actually technically do stand for something. And uh, I come from a family of five. Uh, I have two siblings, so there's three of us kids. And then the one stands for me being the artist and, and being myself and standing on my own. So it really ties in my family into, into the panel that, uh, that I'm doing. So there is, there is meaning that goes on behind it. So it's not just an actual abstract landscape. So I'm going to really quick run, run and wash my hands again. Actually, I'll do it here while we're, I think I've got enough water to get that off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the finished collections. And then so that way you can kind of see, you've seen the start sort of in the middle process here. So obviously these will now get anywhere, you know, from 20 to 20 to 40 more layers of color that go on. And it just depends on, there's a lot of times where I'll repeat the same colors, a lot of times I bring in new colors, but I also do a lot of washes at the end. So I will take um, a white or a gray or even black and really water it down and wash it over. And it just really picks up the, the fine lines and edges of, of what the texture is doing through. So before I show you the finished ones, I'm gonna just quick check and see if anyone's got any questions. Uh, the Red House Square Fire Show is asking what kind of paint do I use? So I use acrylics. Um, I purposely use acrylics for the dry time, but also because I'm using my hands, I don't want to have to uh, have the oils and, um, and and just all the, the chemicals more so than, than using the, um, the, the acrylics. But I love working with acrylics, trying to make them look sort of like an oil paint. So my hands are dry. I'm going to take the iPad here, and we're going to just go close up to a little Blair Witch project here while I'm doing this, so I apologize. I'm actually going to, I don't think I can 
flip this spot. Oh, yes, we can. So here we are. These are 30 by 30s, and these are finished. So these are what the ones I was just showing you look like once they're done. And as I said before, they're all landscape inspired, something that I've seen, somewhere I've traveled to. And then here we have, sorry, the lights from my windows are gonna give a little bit of a shine to, to that. So I'll stand over here to do that. And then I will come back over here to the other two. So I do them predominantly the 36 by 48 and the 30 by 30s are sort of the predominant size that uh, I work in, but I can, I, I have an amazing guy here in Chicago who builds my panels for me. So I can pretty much do any size uh, and have done any size. The, um, it's kind of funny that doing this, these like the 12 by 12 that I'm doing here for the demonstration, they truly take just as much work as that 36 by 48. Just because it's smaller doesn't make it easier or simpler. You're still doing all the layers, you're still doing all the process, you still have the same thought process with it. Um, so it is, so it's a lot of fun. However, in the height of doing a lot of them, because of the sand, because of the industrial staples, I can only work for so long before my hands, I've cut my hands before, you know, they get really dried out, they get really sore just from doing that. So I'll end up moving into another collection that doesn't involve as much heavy texture um, before I, I, I switch to that. So let me just double check if anyone's got any question. Thanks, Alan, I appreciate it. I, I, I've been told a lot that um, people really love my color palette that I use. I, I'm predominantly a blue painter, but I use almost every color that layers underneath it. Um, I've been really working in reds probably for the past two years, but I really try, you know, that's why there's 60 layers of color that go on there. It really creates this cool effect that um, happens to each painting when I do that. So truly that's my One Can Dream series. Um, I've been doing it, as I said, for uh, just, just over six years now. So, the, um, and it was a collection that truly evolved and was created moving into to my new studio space here. So the second collection that uh, I want to show the actual live demonstration with is what I call my Inner Courage series. And this series has really morphed over the um, six months uh, during, um, during the pandemic, during lockdown, and, oops, sorry, heard me say something. Um, so it's the original inspiration and where this, this collection started was really sort of an evolution of my One Can Dream series, which I just worked on the demonstration. We might, if we have time, come back to it again. Um, but I started taking uh, martial arts jitsu two years ago. And for the first six months, I was not there very often. I was traveling, busy with shows and in the studio, but I really became addicted and fell in love with it. And with my instructor, we worked really hard together and it's a fascinating sport. And I was really intrigued to see how it would affect my thought process when I came to the studio and how, how I translate what I'm learning on the mats in a, in a martial art to, to the canvas. And so these are all on canvas. And what started happening was I would come in after a session and I would layer texture on and I would actually start thinking about what I just learned and I would create the patterns of the texture through the, the moves and the techniques that I was learning. And so over the first few weeks of this collection, I really, I'm self-taught so I just experiment a lot and I just really started layering colors and what the whole idea behind the, the series is I layer a ton of, so a little different than this, I layer a ton of color work on the canvases first, and then I layer texture, then I do more color, then I layer, and then it gets whitewashed and softened. And the whole concept is that if you watch two black belts doing this jujitsu, there's an elegance to it. However, it might have taken them 20 years to get there or 15 years, and they'll never stop learning, nor will I. And that's where the complexity is hidden behind the painting 
but then you see the soft elegance. So that's kind of where my brain is. So I'm going to show you a few of the finished ones and then I'll turn the card around and we'll have some fun and do that. I'm just going to quick make sure. Um, do you get movement from paint over the lines, mostly vertical? So Jeff, yeah, I, um, I do use, uh, typically um, it is, I think it's the Virgo in me. I'm definitely more grid line and that comes from the inspiration of seeing the city and the train lines and everything out of my studio windows. I do do a lot of, um, you know, crisscrossing on it and I can show you real quick on that. I have incorporated circles as well and that's been sort of recently and I'm using metal washers. I'm actually using the lids of the paint tins that go into the, um, into the, the molding paste or onto the paint so it'll create but it's never a true, um, a circle isn't the, the full thing. I've done, I did a series probably three, four years ago where a circle was the predominant thing, whereas now it's just sort of an underlying color. And the paints, depending on the texture I do, the paints really cover the lines, but then they feed off the lines so you can see them. So there's a lot of times where um, it softens the lines, but you still sort of see that texture. Just to make sure. John Jones, my father, asked me if I still have fingerprints. They're getting very, very, very washed away slowly over time. So who knows in another 15, 20 years. But uh, so here, we'll walk over and I'm going to show you the my Inner Courage series, the finished. I'm going to go reverse. I'm going to show you the finished pieces and then we're going to have some fun. So these are three of my latest. So there, you know, on these ones, there's lots of blues, there's some undertone reds in the patinas, but you can really see where I really do a softening of it. But as we get closer, you'll really see, you'll really, really see the colors that were on there and all the different layers of texture. So I apologize if I'm a little bumpy here, but really want you to be able to see. So there, so Jeff, I would say um, there's a circle and those are the, the metal washers. And um, I guess I'll move a little slower here. That just kind of made me dizzy. So I'm going to go over, these are the other two and these have actually been framed. These are 36 by 36. I painted them as a diptych and it's sort of to play off the, the challenges I'm I'm moving from a white belt trying to earn being a blue belt and you'll really see the layers these are really heavily textured so I'm gonna take you back to my workstations but actually I'll go real quick it's a fun story here so I've got my niece and family always with me uh, surrounded by my family and, and my husband here in the studio but that is my self-portrait it's a one and only and uh, I was inspired by another artist in my early part of the career to create a self-portrait and never, never did, never did. And it was the first year that I moved into this studio that I was sitting and I was staring at a canvas and finally just decided to, to go for it. And as an abstract artist, it's a real challenge to do do something like that. And I just want to line this up here now that I don't have the laptop. Move in a little closer. Sorry about this, guys. I had had this all laid out with my laptop and easy moving. This is just a little, little different. But all right. So the inner courage ones that I just showed you are finished. This one is almost finished. So it has. Go closer again so you can see. It has. This has got a lot of blue and green and uh, slight red undertones to it. But this is towards the finished face. So what I'm going to do now is because it's been layered in white, I'm going to actually go a little darker before I go back to white. So I use um, I use a darker sort of a bluish color. I also can use uh, a black color. I didn't realize I'm not in the picture. And so what I've learned, it's kind of it's kind of been interesting with being um, in lockdown and luckily for me I'm in a building 
that nobody was here for six months and I work alone in my own studio, so I was able to come here. And I really started taking what I've learned in my Wonka Dream series and applying it to, to this new series, but I really just started experimenting and I started doing a lot more, letting the paint sort of flow on the canvas. So what I do um, on these, as I mentioned, I do layers of color that actually go on first, then I do the texture. So here I've got the washers, I've got the beach sand, I've got paper, there's larger strips of paper this time, and then the plaster work. And then I actually use my hands to create all the line work that goes on. And then I start to do the paint. So for this to get to the finished product that you just saw, I'm going dark again, and then I'll do another wash of the white, and then this one will be finished. So this really just has two phases sort of left, and I thought this would be a good chance for you to be able to see sort of how it goes. So again, using my, my brushes, <laughs> I should say no brushes, paint with your hand. Um, and then the color goes on, and then I literally, this time, rather than going and spreading the way I do with the other collection, this gets actually tapped on for a little while. And as I do that, I will now start to add a lot more water to it. And then it really slowly just starts to work its way down the canvas and really softens all the under layers up and allows me to really kind of change the, the mood of the feel and the feel of the piece, the emotion of what's going on. And then it also, I never thought of myself as a, a drip artist, but I've been really loving how the paint now suddenly really drips down. So as we add a little bit more, so at this point I sort of listen to listen to a little voice in my head and see where it is that I'm wanting to sort of stop the darkness and allow the lightness to come through. And then I truly just start washing it down. And then I'll come back and I'll darken it up again. This will probably go through three rounds of, of this happening this way. And a lot of times I won't wait for it to dry. I'll actually keep going as it's, as it's getting wet. So I'll see that I would like a little bit more darkness kind of through the middle there. So I'll grab that. theater group next door on this side and uh, they're always so loud practicing and rehearsing that it's okay that I make noise on my walls coming back. So it's kind of a really cool cool workspace. So actually to tell you a little bit, the building that I'm in is um, I'm in a six story old warehouse and it's a city block long. My building is just on the corner of one of the blocks and then the rest is four story and three story that are all connected for the whole city block. Well, it turns out this was called the Mance Corporation way back in the day, and this was the executive offices and the printing facilities for Esquire magazine and Playboy magazine when they were headquartered here in Chicago. I'm not sure what year that was, way back when. And so the floor I'm actually on is where all the old printing presses were. So it's pretty cool to, to know there's a really cool history that goes on in behind where, where I work and try to draw some inspiration. So at this point now, I'll actually get a little bit of a spotted effect and I start flinging on, sorry for being out of breath here, <laughs> it's also my workout. And so this part now is done and I'm going to take you to a piece that looks like this and I'll do the whitewash on that. I'm going to really quick run and wash my hands so that way I don't layer the blue onto the white. Let me just double check if anybody's. Uh, so Alan asked, do I varnish or leave as is? You know, sometimes uh, I do use um, an acrylic glaze at the end. I have a, flat, a matte finish. I also have a high gloss finish. Typically I do the gloss because it really lets the underlying colors kind of seep back through and just gives you sort of that nice, just elegant shine sort of to it. However, there are other pieces like the white one I showed earlier that has that more matte finish. And it gives it sort of just kind of a, a edgier, rougher, rougher finish to it. So 
So I'm going to move the cart back now over to the one that's looking like the one I just added the blue to. However, this is now going to become white. And just let me wash my hands. I will keep chatting with you as I do. Thank you for your patience on that. So I know I'm coming up on about 42 minutes, so I'm going to do the layer of white on here. I'm going to sh show you a few more of my other two collections. I've got currently four collections that I work on, and, um, and then we'll wrap up. So I hope you've been enjoying. Like I said, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know, and I'll take, a, I'll take a quick scan at the very end too as well. But uh, you can always feel free to email me. Send me a note, give me a call, and I'm always happy to tell you more. So this time, this is getting on the way I do the laundry. So rather than the washing, which I just did, I'm pulling, pulling the paint down. speak for uh, the lines on the canvas or, or the movement rather than the paint. So again at this point I'm going to I'm going to go down probably about three quarters of the way down and again I'm using the water to wash thin out the paint as well. process to allow the paint to really drip down so at the bottom you're really going to start to see the um, the the, um, the drip lines and everything that are going on just seeing a couple comments come up uh, right now oh you're welcome this is a lot of fun like I said I feel like I'm on a cooking show <laughs> so as I said before this is kind of a typical this would be kind of a typical day for me in the studio. So I'll have just layered on the layer on this one. I'd be layering this one while this dries. Now I'm going to go jump back to the Wonka Dream ones that are sitting on the table. So I'm always, always working on, you know, multiple. And I'll show you once I've dry my hands up. You can see all the paint on the floor. You can see all the paint on the walls. It's actually really fun to be in a space where uh, I have a manager coming that has no problem that I can make a mess. And that really helps as an artist not to be constrained by who I can't get anything on the road or who I can't get anything on the wall, which is what it was for me at the very start. I used to paint out of my sunroom and I had to put plastic down and, and you know, it was, it was tough. So this has been, been fun. So for this Inner Courage one, this one's a little different than the other one in the sense that with the paper, I use wider strips. There's a woven pattern on the top before I actually start to do the carving in with my hands. So this one here will probably go through another 10 layers of color, whereas the one I just added, the, the blue two, will get its white wash and then it'll be done and it'll look like the other ones. So let me just quick my hands here. So if anyone else has any questions, I can... Yes, <laughs> yes, Jeff, there's no staples in this one, so I'm able to 
to move a lot more fluid and not get cut. <laughs> so this is this is the one where this is literally the beach sand, the, the plaster, the paper, uh, and then the paints. So there are there are some textures that um, you know I have to go slower over, but I am truly able to, to move much faster than than the ones with the industrial staples. So real quick here, I'll give you we'll go back to the so here you can see pretty much how much fun I get to have with everything on the walls. So, so I know we're pretty much coming up on time, so I just really would like to say thank you for uh, joining me and thank you for taking the time to learn about me as an artist and my processes and uh, my collections. I'm just going to quick show you the other two. So I do a series called the Muskoka series, which is my birch work, my aspen inspired and birch inspired paintings. So these are all acrylic based. These actually use a palette knife versus my hands. And, uh, and then I do a fiber process over top of them. And then my other series is what I call my urban shore series. So these are all sort of inspired by the Chicago lakefront here. And I've got more of those on my website and, and whatnot. And as you can see, I've got great light. So I get to have fun with lots of plants in that as well. So again, um, thank you to the Red House Square Fine Art Show for inviting me today. I hope you guys had fun with me. I hope you've been uh, enjoying your cocktail while, uh, while I've been chatting away. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to roll my credits here a little bit and uh, you can follow me, Darren Jones Art on Instagram. Darren Jones Art on Facebook and Darren Jones Art on Twitter. I am pretty active uh, on all those. It's 99% art related. However, I do I do post some meals every once in a while. Uh, and then to contact me here as I roll my credits, it's uh, DarrenCJones.com is my website. And then my email is DarrenJonesArt at Hotmail.com. And then my cell phone, 983-5614-773 area code. And then, Last but not least, big thank you for joining the Thursday Night 5 O'Clock Club. This has been a lot of fun. I hope uh, it's been uh, informative to you. And if you have any interest in any of my works, go to my website. I have full collections showing there. You can uh, see all, all of the collections, see some of my latest work. And uh, obviously not this year with shows canceled, but next year you'll be able to see uh, where I'll be and where I'm exhibiting. But I'm here in the studio. I'm glad you were able to um, spend some time with me, and uh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I'm going to quick look and make sure I didn't miss any questions, and we're good. Uh, Ruth, I use canvas and boards. Yes, just, just canvas and boards. So the One Can Dream series is uh, the boards and the... Um, the Inner Courage and then my Muskoka and uh, Urban Shore, those are on canvas. And I purposely do that, um, I purposely do that because of the industrial staples, they need the, the weight of the, the wood panel to go from there. So anyhow, I know I've, uh, I've kept up, uh, kept you guys here long enough and uh, I appreciate, like I said, uh, chiming in. It's a gorgeous night here in Chicago, hopefully wherever you are, you're having some beautiful fall weather. But again, thank you Rittenhouse Fine Arts Show. Um, thank you for uh, inviting me. Thank you for taking your time to have a little glimpse into my life as a, an abstract painter and to see how I use my hands and no brushes. So thank you. Good night and uh, enjoy. I appreciate it.